Welcome to Pop Turnitin, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnitin Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, TV, sports, film, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Ramoliotis. On Twitter, goes PD Beats. Man, we've been wanting to do this interview for a long time, so we're finally making it happen, which is awesome. We are speaking to an actor. You will recognize him as Henry Mills in Once Upon a Time. We are with Jared Gilmore. Jared, welcome to Pop Turnitin. I'm happy to be here. Howdy, everyone. Yeah, and yeah, no, it's it, it seems like it's been a uh, it's been a while since we've been. Uh, yeah, we, wanted... we've been we've been chatting about doing this for a while now, and we're doing it, which is awesome. So. First off, I mean, I'm sure you get it a lot, but just congratulations to the whole success with that show, man. Because that Thank that you. that's so that's much. really cool. Thank so, you ta- I know you started that show when you were significantly young because you're 18 yeah, now. Yeah. When you started. What was that like? How were you kind of preparing yourself for that? It it was it was a weird experience, and I didn't really have anything to compare it to. Um, so it, there wasn't really much preparation for it. I mean. I've learned so much. It's been an honor to be able to grow up on a show with such amazing actors and, and, and be able to grow as a person as an actor. And there, there was so many, so much talent on set that it was incredible. Um, it's something that I'll never be able, it's something that I'll always have with me. I'll, I'll never, I'll never be able to forget my experiences on the show. And you know, the, the, the concept of it is is always going to be seen as, you know, incredible and unique. There's yeah. so many shows out there that are coming out. What do you kind of think makes a show, for you specifically, you know, um, what makes what makes a show kind of pop out for you? Like, what are you looking for in a show? For me, when I watch a show, it, it's kind of interesting. I, I look for a few different things. Personally, I watched a lot of, uh, a lot of anime, a lot of Japanese anime. Mm-hmm. It's kind of my thing. Um and I really take time to get to know the characters. And I, I, when I'm watching a show, I like to connect with the characters. Um, you know, any show, um, it's, it's, it's really, I like to find a character that I can connect with on a personal level and compare myself to. And I think one thing that's really cool about Once is the characters were always so real and relatable that anybody can find something to connect with, yeah. um, which, is, which is really great. And... I've always said the message of the show is so important and so so powerful that anyone can watch it and find some kind of meaning. No, for sure. So anime. So you're. I'm. I'm hoping you're a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball Z. It's funny. We had uh, Peter Kalamis. He did the voice of Goku in one of the ocean yeah. dubs on the show, and he did a Kamehameha, and it was probably one of the coolest things ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Dragon Ball Z was like my like childhood. I can actually say that now since I'm technically an adult. <laughs> no, it's it's insane. I me, it's funny because you mentioned like anime and like Japanese culture. Like me, I love like there's a lot of awesome like I'm a big like metal metal music fan. Like I love like, yeah. like heavy metal. There's a lot of bands from Japan that are awesome. Hmm, that's that's interesting. Yeah, no 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 <laughs> one yeah, there's bands like the Gazette, Dura Grey, Maximum the Hormone. They're from Japan and it's awesome i don't speak japanese yeah so i don't I'm, know what I'm, they're I'm, saying and i I'm, i want to take a take a japanese class at some point i, w- I want to learn no for sure so I, what i find it interesting is people will also know who follow you that you're a big video game guy yeah i'm, I'm a huge gamer That's, you love gaming yeah. yeah and what i find really cool and they go hand in hand is before we started i was asking you what you've been up to and you said one thing that you want to do is go maybe into voice acting yeah i'm wondering if those two have something to do with it. I'm wondering if they your do. love for video games is driving you to maybe do yeah. voice acting, Jared. They really do. I mean, voice acting is something that uh, I see as a challenge. It's something that I, I really want to get good at. I want, um, and with acting, you can always improve. And I feel like it's something that I, I, I really want to get into. And I feel like you have to do something you're passionate about, like for, for your career, which is something that's important. And I'm passionate about, about gaming and, and anime and animation. So yep. I, feel like I should give my talent, whatever talent I may have, to something I'm passionate about because it would just shine through in my work. Um, so, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. So, what are, I, I want to know. So, you're 18 right now. You've been you've been on two huge shows. One, you've been on like as a bigger role, yeah. so Once Upon a Time. But you were also on Mad Men, 
which is a huge show. Um, what do you kind of think have been some of the biggest learning experiences for yourself going on these big, massive shows? I think one of the biggest experiences is learning how to function around adults, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I was so young when I started on these shows that learning how to function around adults was, was important. I mean, of course, at the same time, it's kind of a double-edged sword because I also have no idea how to function around people my age, um, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but I think some of the biggest learning experiences were just the one-on-one scenes. I know every time I had a scene with Robert Carlyle, um, Bobby, who played uh, Rumpelstiltskin on, um, on Once Upon a Time, I, I learned so much. I, I felt like I improved as an actor just being on set with him. Oh, wow. It, it was incredible. Um his, his method, his performance, it was just, every, I, I, I will always cherish the scenes I, I, I had with Robert. You mentioned a little bit, you know, learning to be an adult or acting like an adult when you're on set because you're younger. But what I find yeah. interesting is I had, you know, Matt Doherty, he was in like the Mighty Ducks movies. He played Averman yeah. and he, I asked him a question about, you know, being a child actor and him saying, you know, it's not a normal life. It's a completely different life, right? Yeah, I, I like to say we we live a normal, extraordinary kind of life. It, it's it's really it's really weird um, because we go. I mean, personally, I I've had my my own my own bouts with with depression and anxiety and and all the all the you know the all the stuff everyone deals with. So while we go through the same stuff, we also have a pretty extraordinary life um, because we don't have the same sort of work ethic and, and lifestyle. Um, I mean, we do have the same work, work ethic, but we don't have the same, like, you, you, you get it. Yeah, no, uh, I understand. We, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's a stressful job. And one thing I always like to say is, is even though we're, we're actors and we're on TV and you watch us, we're still normal people. You can approach us on the street and, and it's okay. We're not, we're not, we're not like, some sort of godly beings. So what, know, what advice? Oh, continue, sir. Oh yeah, I, I was just gonna say. I, I know it, it's it sounds funny. I, I had a interaction with a fan where someone came up to me and they're just like, "You're real," <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, um, yes." <laughs> oh man, <laughs> man, I, was that like at a convention? No, it was just. Uh, and I, my sister rides horses. Um, that that's that's her her thing. Yeah. And I said at one of the horse shows, and this fan just comes up to me, and they're like, "You're real." So how would it, that that must happen all the like, like it, often it, it that happens, you get happens, that you get it's recognized quite frequently. Um, it, it's happened steadily more frequently as the seasons go. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, doing conventions is something that I've also grown to love because you know I'm a nerd. I love. I love conventions. I love going to them as a fan. So going there and, and being a guest is also incredible. So I want a funny, so this is the perfect, I'm happy you said that because now I want a funny convention story because we've had people that have gone to conventions. They've always said, like had amazing stories to tell us. So I'll give an example. Like Peter Kalamis said he showed up to Dragon Con one year and he's sitting down and someone comes up, this kid comes up to him and he's like, do you do the voice of Goku? And he's like, yeah, I do it. So he's like, let's hear it. So he does the voice. And then the kid's like, huh, must have been a long time ago. And it's like walked away. <laughs> I know. I, I think the funniest story I have about about a, a, a fan meeting actually didn't happen at a convention. I, I'll tell you a convention story too. But okay, I was at Barnes & Noble. It's like a, it's a, it's a book story. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, and these two people walk up to me. I, I'm, I'm in the manga section. And they say, you look just like that kid from Once Upon a Time, Henry. <laughs> and I go, I, yeah, I, I am that kid. Like, I'm, I'm Jared Gilmore. And they're like, they, they, the guy, he gets really close to me and he goes, no, you're not. He just walks away. And, and his girlfriend's <laughs> like, what? And follows him off. So I'm just standing there like, what? 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 I know uh, when, it, when it comes to um, fan conventions, I, I, I've had some some interactions with, with people uh, wanting to, you know, like take me out to lunch, mm-hmm. but being, being very forceful about it, uh, kind of like rushing me in a hallway, but that's fine. Um, I think it's funny. When, a lot of the fans are so uh, respectable at conventions mm-hmm. that you don't really have any really 
wacky stories. I mean, I have a lot of fun stories with, with the, the cast behind the scenes, but... I think a really cool story, too, is we had Delilah as uh, Dawson. She's a New York Times bestseller. She wrote the Star Wars Phasma book, and she yeah. was doing a signing, and the lineup... It was like a Star Wars signing. It was like four Star yeah. Wars authors, and she, there was, the line was huge, she said, right? So she's, like, walking... And, like, authors are not like you, right? Like, there's going to be some authors that you'll know the name, but you may not put a face yeah. to the name type thing. So she's, like, walking in, and they're like, hey, no cutting. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, trust me, you're going to want me to cut. Like, I'm one of the authors. Yeah. And then someone's like, I don't believe you. And it's like, they weren't letting her in. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. No, but the convention, well, first of all, I mean – the fandom for these shows specifically, Once Upon a Time, it's insane. You know what yeah, I mean? Uh, and, I, and I know what you're going to say, you know, the fans mean everything to us. And it's true. But, like, there, there's – I don't think you can thank them enough, one can make an argument. Yeah, you, you can't thank the fans enough. I mean, honestly, they, they make the show. They make, they make the series. They, they're going to keep it – they're what's going to keep the series alive um, for, for years to come. And I know, uh, personally, I like to say I'm a part of the community uh, just because, you know – um, not only am I on the show they watch, but I'm also a fan of the same things they're a fan of. I, I mean, I, I, I always, I do the same things. And, you know, when I'm watching a TV show, I, I, I fanboy. I, I make the sale, sound of a dying whale when, when something <laughs> happens. When, when, you know, when two people get together, I'm like, ah, oh, so, so <laughs> You know, you totally sound weird. Yeah, I just yeah. feel like we're going to post this episode, you're going to do that, and you're going to have all these Instagram, like, gifts of you doing that from your crazy Oh, parents. no, no, but believe me, there's plenty out there. There's plenty out there. I'm yeah. sure there's a bunch I, of fan accounts for you as well. I, there, there's, there's, there's a few. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's funny. I, 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 have a, I have one of my things is I don't like being someone I'm not. So whenever I do an interview or, or I'm at a Q&A or – or anything. I just I, I be myself. I, I do weird voices and I, I you know, do my thing. No, for which sure. Is, which is something that which, what I think is really important. I think a lot of people think they have to be someone they're not on social media and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to just be yourself. Um, Absolutely. No, for it. sure. What do you think are some of the so what I find interesting is you have a job, you know, you get paid to be a storyteller. You're just telling these stories. Yeah. Coming, you're bringing these characters to life, like Henry Mills. Um, but I feel like there's also a part of this job too is the like the fan engagement and the community because it's it's part yeah. of it. So my my question to you too is, you know, I'm sure there are like we we had you know Ryan Sands who was in The Wire and Marvel's The Runaways and he was talking about like he never gets sick and tired of people like on the street wanting a photo of him or an autograph, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the, like the, the couple of places where he doesn't like it to happen is, you know, if he's sitting down at a restaurant eating with family or friends, that's like kind of like a no-go or like when he go, when, when he's like public restrooms could also not be the yeah. best time. Okay. You know what? If, if someone asked me to take a picture in a public restroom, I'd just be like, uh, can we wait till we're like outside of the restroom? <laughs> just, um, Okay. <laughs> uh, for me, I, I love I love engaging with the fans, and they always have some. They're always so wonderful and nice. They always have something good to say to you, um, which is which is nice. Um, oh man! Do also, they ever? Do they ever? Like I used to. Be, do they ever like bake for you or give you gifts? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, that that happens. I yeah. used to. I used to be a tour manager, a concert promoter, and. A lot of like for bands, man. Like yeah, they, they, yeah, they yeah. there were cupcakes. And uh, I just wanted to go back to something you said. Uh, we're pretty much paid to be storytellers, and I, yeah. I like to call myself a storyteller. Uh, not only because I'm an actor, but I, I also enjoy enjoy writing. It's one of my other passions. Um, I mean, like like, like right now, I'm, I'm I'm mostly writing for a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that I'll get to at some point. But um, so I think being a storyteller is something that's incredible. I know I, I play a lot of role playing games. In general, because I, I also like to say I role play for a living. It's what I do. Acting is essentially just a form of role playing. Yeah. So it's it's really cool. No, for sure, for sure. And a couple more questions for wrap up too. What have been some of your, um, besides Once Upon a Time, some of your kind of favorite moments of the storytelling that you've kind My of been a part of? My favorite moments of storytelling. I know I, I 
I, other than Once Upon a Time, I think my favorite moment of storytelling, my favorite moment of acting that I've ever done uh, is Little Bill O'Reilly. It was a series of skits on a talk show called Talk Show with Spike Springsteen. And I played a young Bill O'Reilly. And it was so much fun. Uh, I know back then when I did it, I had no idea the stuff I was, the nonsense I was spewing out of my mouth. But I go back and watch it now, and it's the funniest thing I've ever, I've ever done. Um, I, I'll always love watching it. And whenever I meet someone and they're like, what else have you done other than Once Upon a Time? This is what I will point to because the power, <laughs> how hilarious it is. No, mad, not Mad Men. You're just going to go to that. I'll, I'll, I'll mention Mad Men, but like Bobby never did anything like, when I was playing Bobby at least, he never really did anything like juicy as they would no. say um yeah but, have you ever thought about that mad, though like what if they yeah. made me do anything mad, juicy? yeah mad men was so much fun though and the cast was so amazing working with john ham was was incredible everyone was so wonderful and it was a really good jumping off point um for for me as, as an actor mm -hmm, absolutely one quick question before we wrap up as well you are um a, a young actor and a young up and coming actor and writer people might refer to you as that what is some advice that you could bestow on people that want to do what you do or want to get into acting or writing what it what is so, like some stuff that you can kind of recommend for them yeah some some words of wisdom uh i mean first of all this is going to be totally cliche what they tell you every time you go to an acting class just be natural um don't over act um that's something that's really important. Um, and something else is just be, be patient. Um, even if it looks like things are going downhill and everything's awful, everything happens for a reason, even if you can't see it first. And someday your dream will just walk up and slap you in the face. Um, I, I, th I know that's something that I've always had to, to, to remember. I always, always keep fighting. Um, Keep, always keep believing and it's something the show show really taught me because you know as, as i mentioned earlier i've i've battled with anxiety and depression and all that stuff so i know it, it can be hard mm -hmm. and one other thing is uh on um, on a more funnier note uh i think to be an actor to, to be in this industry you have to be a little bit insane just, just a tiny bit mm -hmm. um because it's it's rough. Uh, the actual definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same or different results. Um, and as an actor, we do lots of auditions, uh, like a lot of auditions. And sometimes we won't have the same result, or we will have the same result. And then that one time we we won't, and that that that's the the special moment. Oh, absolutely. Well, Jared. Thank you so much for coming on Pop Curative, man. Though this is awesome. It's been an um, honor. Thank you no, for having me. Much I, much. No, absolutely. The stage is yours, man, or the floor, whatever you want to call it. The <laughs> platform. Plug away. Where can people follow you on social media? What have you been kind of working on? What could they be checking out? Uh, I've been working a lot on social media, Twitter. I've been posting a bunch on my Twitter. Um, Instagram, I don't post on as much um, just because... I find it hard to take pictures of myself, but check check out my Twitter. Uh, I'm doing a Twitch stream. Uh, I'm going to be starting that up again soon. Uh, I think that that's MickWolf515 at Twitch.com. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. I'll just be playing games, hanging out, having wow. a good time. And you may or may not see some of my writing at some point on one of my social medias. I'll, I'll link to it. So uh, good times. Awesome, man. No, absolutely. Maybe uh, we can have you on the show again sometime, like a panel, because I also have yeah. panels too, right? Like I, I have me and I, I, I love it. I love it. And, awesome. Uh, maybe, maybe you'll, maybe everyone will hear my hear my voice at some point, as I would like to get into voice. I would love it, man. I just yeah. the. the the, the i don't know geek culture is huge it's, right now it's, yeah it's 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 awesome it's a good time for geek culture yeah and as i said when you're passionate about something you, you just got to work towards it you gotta you gotta keep 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 going absolutely well jared thank you so much man of and course i wish you all the best dude thank you no problem. This has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for the video episodes. We have, you know, um, if you like pop culture, we have episodes. If we like sports, we got cool sports guests. If you like reality TV, we have a lot of that as well. So anything really, check it out. Um, if you want to listen to us and, well, you might want to see Jared, but you might not want to see me. If you want to listen, Spotify, iTunes, that's where you will have the audio only versions. And until next time, this is Jared Gilmore and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn It In. 
make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.